Hi everyone, I'm Jane, and today we're gonna to paint our own version of Van Gogh's painting, The Almond Branch in a Glass. Now, although this is a famous painting that you may be very familiar with, I encourage you to use your own expression while creating it. Use techniques that you're comfortable with. Use colors that you like. Don't pressure yourself to create an image that looks exactly like what you see in both technique, color, proportions, and everything else. Also, I just wanted to give a huge thank you to all of you. I just hit 200,000 subscribers, and I wanted to say thank you because without all of you, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. I never dreamed that this could be my full-time job, that I would get to share my love of art and learning with all of you. But because of all 200,000 of you, I can do that. So thank you. Check out the video description below for a full list of materials for today's painting. Now let's get started. For today's painting, I am again starting with my 12 by 16 inch Frederick's Red Label canvas. And as you can tell, I've already given it an underpainting and this is a alizarin crimson and white, about a 50-50 ratio. Now this painting is of course based on Van Gogh's almond blossom in a glass painting and I know you've probably seen a million different versions of this painting. The reason I wanted to paint it today was because my style is very different from Van Gogh's so I wanted to take the techniques that I use and apply it to a painting that I'm familiar with and see what happens. So the first thing we want to do is draw it on the canvas and I'm going to use a brown chalk pencil. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. I'm going to start a little above halfway. This is probably, oh, probably about 10 or so inches. And this is for the tabletop. And then the book is pretty close to the edge. And it comes up at an angle above the edge of the table. I know that feels weird, but just that's how it is. And over here, it's right about the same height as the tabletop, maybe just slightly higher than the tabletop. Now the important thing with the book here is making sure that it's just as wide here as it is here. So I'm gonna start by kind of seeing how wide that is, almost as wide as my pencil. Oh. Yeah, my angle is getting way off. It's super off, man. I'm not doing very good at this angle. I think that's probably as far over as I want to take it. That should be good. And it doesn't have to be real exact. If you look at a lot of elements in Van Gogh paintings, you know, the proportions are rarely ever perfect, but you don't want to make it so awkward that, you know, that that catches your attention. I think that's probably pretty good. It's a little bit off, but I'm not terribly worried about it. Now the edge of my glass, we'll bring it in about an inch or so, start it just above the edge of the table. I'm just kind of guessing on my measurements here. Don't be too precise. And maybe right there for the bottom. You just want to make sure that the bottom of the glass does not start above the bottom of the book. So the bottom of the glass, you don't want it above here. You want it down below. Let's bring that over just a little bit more. Nice rounded bottom. Don't worry about, you know, having a ton of sketch lines. When we start painting, it will cover all of this. And our circle, well, it's kind of an oval for the top of our glass. Just sketch it in there. I think I will widen it just a little bit up at the top so that my glass kind of flares just a bit. I don't think Van Gogh's flares too much. Not really. There's a little hint of a flare there at the lip. All right, and then the level of the water in the glass. Just make sure that it kind of follows this shape here. It wants to follow that shape. 
Same with the interior. You want it to follow that shape. We can just kind of indicate where the branch is going to be. I'm not too worried about that at this point. There's going to be a little piece of it here. The reflection is kind of fractured. Comes over here, rests on top of the glass. And up. And I may change the shape of the branch a bit to fit my personality more. Okay, so there we've drawn the whole thing. It's pretty simple to draw. I don't think you need to get too crazy about perspective. Again, you just wanna make sure that the book is relatively even. You know, it can be off a little bit, but pretty much. And then I think the important thing on the glass is that you get this shape, this shape, and this shape to kind of match. In fact, let's draw in that, that bottom bit. All three of these shapes should agree with each other. Okay, I think that's good enough. Let's get started painting. Okay, I'm gonna start by painting in the background here behind the book. And on my plate, I have Payne's Gray, Thalo Green, Ultramarine Blue, and Titanium White. Now, a lot of times I get asked, how do you know what colors to use for a painting? Well, me, I kind of look at a painting or a image and I decide how will I get a color that I am happy with that kind of matches it and then I just really stick with it. I just make a decision. I don't agonize over it. So in Van Gogh's image here, it's got kind of a blue-green background. Looks like a little bit of thalo, looks like a little bit of ultramarine. But at the same time, it's not really bright. It's a little bit muted. So that's why I decided to throw some Payne's Gray in there, just to mute it down just a little bit. Now these are probably not the exact colors that Van Gogh used, but I don't really care. I like the colors that I get from this, and I feel like it communicates the feeling well enough, so I'm happy with it. So I'm gonna use my half inch flat, and I'm just gonna start mixing a little bit of each color together. Little Payne's Gray, little Thalo Green, a little bit of Ultramarine, and every time I come back for more, I'm gonna make it a little bit different. Now in Van Gogh's painting, if you notice at the bottom, it's a darker color than at the top. And he's got different directions of brush strokes. I'm not gonna worry about that, but I do like the darker. So I'm gonna just start with this color and see what happens. Now my point in telling you about, you know, not worrying about the colors that you mix is because I also hear a lot from you guys when you get frustrated because you're painting with me and you're having a hard time getting the exact same colors that I have. Don't, seriously, don't sweat that. It's your painting, you know, you're the one doing it. So let it look however your painting needs to look. I'm just kind of starting down here. Short little brush strokes. I'm not worried if a hint of that pink shows because it will just help bring a bit of cohesion into the painting, a little bit of harmony. Everything will have a little hint of this pink in there somewhere. You can see my color's a little different every time I go back. I'm really just kind of laying it down in a little area and then kind of breaking up any like brush stroke lines. As I move up the canvas, I'll lighten it a little bit. Because I did really like that, but I just, I can't paint like Van Gogh at all. You know, the little brush strokes, they're very orderly and tidy. And <laughs> that's just not me. I am not orderly and tidy at all. I'm not terribly worried about losing the edge of the glass or the branch. I put it in once already, I can put it in again. I think I'm gonna grab just a little more white and a little bit more blue just to change the color a little for the inside of the glass. That will help give the illusion 
that we're looking through glass on that part. We're seeing the background, but the color of the glass is changing it just a little bit. See how I left a hint of that pink line around the edge so I can see where the see where the glass was, but I can still make changes to it later. Maybe I'm gonna darken that just a little bit. That seems just a bit too light. I think that's another reason I wanted to do this. You know, sometimes when we are recreating a, a work, whether it's from a tutorial or it's a famous painting, whatever, we feel pressure to, you know, make it look like what we see. That's what this image looks like. That's what it should look like when I'm done with it. But I don't think that that's the case. It doesn't have to be the case. I picked up a little bit of extra water, just a tiny bit. There we go. See, light pressure to just kind of dust those two sections together with the different colors. When we're painting, you know, we're creating. And when we're creating, there's no, there's no rules about how you have to create it. So, you know, you don't have to do it the way that, the way that it's presented to you or, you know, the way that you think it has to be done or the way anyone else thinks it has to be done. If you wanna completely go off the deep end and do something completely different, you're free to do that. That's why it's art. You know, it's art isn't about recreating something specific and exact and perfect. It's about expressing yourself. And you can certainly have the goal to recreate something exact and perfect. And, you know, if you want to do hyper realism or, you know, photo realism, whatever it is. I'm more interested in, you know, kind of showing how I see something or challenging myself to do it different. Figure it's already been done the way I see it. Why do I need to do it again? See how it's slowly getting lighter as I go upward, getting a bit of a texture, almost like a like a stucco wall or something. My colors are a little different every time. Sometimes it's a little more green, sometimes a little more blue or gray or lighter or darker. I also never worry, not only do I not worry about, you know, getting the right color, but I also don't ever worry about getting the same color. I'm just picking up white now, for right now. I've still got all those other colors on my brush. Get it nice and light up here. I really like the way that pink plays off of this color. I don't know if you can see in the video, but I can see a bit of that pink all throughout this wall and I, it's really pleasing. And that's just a decision that I made. I feel like I can see a bit of pink on the table under the yellow, but not in the wall back here, but I thought that would look nice. So that's just what I went with. All right, that should still be wet, so I should be able to get a bit of a blend there. Yep, not too bad. If it didn't blend, all I would have to do is pick up a bit more of that dark color and dust it lightly. 
And at this point, now that it's all covered, if you felt like you wanted to change it, you know, make it a little bit more green or darker or whatever, you could absolutely do that. I'm just breaking up a line that I saw there. Maybe pulling a bit more of this dark up. And then we're gonna move on to the table. Okay, for the table, I'm gonna stick with my half inch flat and I have some cadmium yellow light now. You could use cadmium or you know whatever you like. I chose light because it's a little bit of a cooler yellow than the cad yellow medium. I'm gonna get some white and some yellow. I want a very pale color and it doesn't matter if some of that is mixing into it. I'm fine with that. That's a pretty good start. And I'm just going to kind of start scratching in the tabletop. Going around my lines fairly carefully. Again, since I haven't painted in those other bits, it's not a big deal if I paint into them a little because I can cover it later. As I start bringing it down, I think I'm going to start throwing in just a little bit more yellow. But if it's too bright, I just pulled a little bit more of that grayish blue color in. Because I don't want this yellow to be quite so acidic. I want it to be a little bit more drab. I do like at the bottom of Van Gogh's glass how the, the glass has a bit of shape, kind of scalloped a little bit. So I'm gonna play with that and just introduce a few of those little scallop shapes. You could absolutely skip that if you like. A little more yellow, a bit of that color. Right off the bat, as you're doing this color, you might find that the paint is kind of transparent as you're spreading it and showing too much of your tabletop. I encourage you not to worry about that. I mean, you can apply it nice and thick at this point so that your, your underpainting doesn't show. See how I've got some of that showing there? Or you can just worry about it later and decide that you're probably gonna come back and adjust the color anyway or you know, work in layers, whatever. But I'm not gonna worry about it right now. I'm gonna take just a hint of Payne's Gray and pull it in there. Drab that color down just a bit more. And on the table here, as I'm you know going from lighter to darker, I'm not worrying about blending. I really want kind of this streaky look on the table. Make it look just a little different from the wall. It's got a little bit of a different texture. See, just a hint of that Payne's Gray. It's not a completely different color. It's not completely drab down. Just a bit. I'm not gonna worry about going all behind the glass or up the edge of the book because we have a shadow. That was just a little too white, so I just took a bit of that more yellow color up there. And that's covering up more of that underpainting anyway, so. Full pressure, nice bold streaks of paint. Just push it to get it down into the grooves of the canvas. Don't worry about getting a smooth application of color. A 
let's take that same color while we have it, tiny bit of the Payne's Gray in there, and let's start introducing some of the colors that we see into the glass. So mostly on the area that goes up and down in the back, below the surface of the water, I'm gonna start introducing this yellow. Wet my brush just a little bit. I should have done this with the green too, but that's okay, I'll go back and do it. Mostly taking those brush strokes right, straight up and down, but I'm not being obsessive with it, okay? I'm not, you know, trying to cut a perfect edge around the top of the water or around the bottom. But notice I'm not really going into the bottom of the glass down into here. I mean, it, it my brush stroke kind of gets messy and goes into it, but I'm not cutting over it. Let's get a bit of that background color, the color that we used on the wall. Because we want just a little bit of that in here too. Let's throw a little reflection right here. Maybe we've got a bit in here. Again, I'm just pulling it straight up and down. This is where Van Gogh really has a lot of those little dashes. I just don't have the patience for that. And maybe some of that around the bottom. Not covering all of that pink. Since my book is pink, I would absolutely have some of that pink reflecting in here. Okay, the shadow for the book. I'm gonna get some ultramarine and some phthalo green. Mix those together pretty good. Leaning a little closer on the phthalo green side. And then I'm just gonna grab a tiny hint of Payne's Gray to drab it down just a little bit. Maybe the tiniest poke of white, just so it's not too dark. And we'll cut along the edge of the book here. Bold brush strokes, get that, get that color in there, overlap it into the yellow, maybe even scrub it just a little bit. down the edge of the glass. And streak it. I like to take my finger and just kind of wipe out little awkward brush stroke lines. I'm okay with the line being there because it's like the shadow of our glass. And I think I like that. Just picked up a tiny hint of yellow. I like that pretty good. Just make sure there's a bit of this color in here in case it's different than the other colors that I've got. Because all of the colors that are in this painting are going to be reflecting in this glass somewhere. Just kind of scoot some up a bit. All right, as I was standing back looking at this, I decided that I wanted the background, the wall, to be a little bit closer to the color that I have in the shadow here. So I repainted that real quick and I meant to record it, but I forgot to hit record on my camera. So I really did it the exact same way. I just kept my mixture a little heavier on the green side, but I still used all the exact same colors and techniques. I'm just gonna thicken my shadow right here because it was a little transparent. These colors that I'm using are all pretty transparent. And then we'll move on and do the book.
All right, for reals, I'm done with the table for a little bit. Let's get some white and some alizarin. And I'm gonna mix them up to about a medium pink, maybe just a little bit lighter than what I have on the underpainting. And I'm gonna start kind of laying this in, clean up my edge. I should probably be using my flat brush that I've designated as my scrubbing flat brush for this because of the way I'm painting, but that's okay. Just kind of scrubbing that on there. Let's get a little bit of a darker color right here for behind the glass. Along that edge of the book. Pull that out that way. And always, it's okay to blend with your finger. Bring it in there a little bit. A little bit of white and pink. And because my underpainting is pink, I don't have to worry about, you know, getting my color real exact. Right here, I kind of painted over the edge of my book, so I just brought that back a bit. Notice I'm not worrying about the spine yet. We're gonna do that a little bit different. And we have quite a bit of a dark color there. I just picked up straight alizarin gonna pull that out there very lightly. The pressure I'm putting on here, I'm not, you know, like really smearing it. I'm barely, barely touching the canvas. Really, I'm just kind of touching the paint, not the, I'm not pushing all the way down into the canvas. I'm just breaking up lines and smearing colors. Let's get a bit of white. And we're gonna do the same thing here. Just kind of pull that white on the edge. And with the clean finger, so I'm not transferring more of that dark pink. Just break that up a little. This is a painting I've always wanted to do, but I've always been so intimidated by the little, you know, angular brush strokes, the very orderly brush strokes that Van Gogh does. And so I've kind of put it off, this one and a few others. But, you know, I realized it's okay to you know, totally put your own spin onto it. Use your own techniques. Just because it's somebody else's painting doesn't mean that you have to do it the way that they did it. I might come back and throw a little more dark in here in a bit, but it's still pretty wet, so it's not going to do a lot. Instead, I'm going to wipe some of that off. I'm going to get some ultramarine mix it in here with my alizarin because see look I don't get a nice purple it really darkens that alizarin quite a bit so now I just have a darker version maybe just a speck of white and that's the color that I'm going to put in here in the glass so that you know that says that we're looking at the book through the glass and the color of the glass has changed the color of the book a little bit I know that's super, super dark. And we've got a highlight on our book right there, but that's okay. Because I'm not gonna leave it like this. And we've got our darker pink in here. 
maybe a little bit more alizarin. Being really aware of where my my different planes are, you know, the Here I'm only looking through one piece of glass at the table. Throw a little of that highlight in there. So see that color is just a little bit more on the blue side. Down here, I'm looking at it through two panes of glass, through two pieces of the glass double thickness. So maybe we'll make it just a little bit more blue. I'll have a couple reflections of the, the brighter pink in there though. A little bit of blue, a little bit of white. I didn't wash off my brush, so it's still got a bit of pink in there. And right here's the surface of the water. I don't need to cover up all of that pink. A little extra water on my brush. And let's get some pale pink, just the normal pink that we used on the outside of the book, not with the blue in it. And we'll just kind of scratch in a couple of, you know, reflections of it. Can put some on the surface here. inside of the glass. Bring it down a little bit. Super light pressure is gonna help because this is pretty dry. So if I put heavy pressure, I'm gonna lay down a really hard line. But see, I'm barely touching streaking up and that kind of lets me control where the line is fuzzy and where the line is very crisp. Let's throw just a hint of that onto the bottom of the glass. So maybe some back here. If we go straight up and down like that over the bottom, then that kind of brings the reflection to the front. So we'll do that a little bit. Don't be judgy of your glass right now. I know right now it's super easy to look at it and judge it, but don't. All right, I'm gonna get more of my blue-green, a little bit of Payne's Gray, a little heavier toward the green, a little bit of white. And let's paint in this edge of our book. streak it. Let's pick up a little more white. Maybe I'll throw a little yellow in there. Just using the tip of my brush. See, I'm just kind of, kind of like that. 
like I'm drawing with the tip of the brush. And that's how you get that streaky look that can kind of look like pages. All of this color is so transparent. There we go. Just applying a little bit more there and lightly streaking it back. Wipe some of that off. Pick up a little more yellow white, maybe a little heavier on the side of the white. And we'll fill that in down here. See that bit of yellow says that the color of the table is reflecting up off of it. I think that's kind of nice. And our book edge, our alizarin and white mixture, and the tiniest speck of yellow, just to warm it up a little bit. See that? It's barely different. Barely, barely different. But what that helps do is, again, say that the table is kind of reflecting up onto the book. I'm going to come back in with just a little extra alizarin right here. Same thing over here. Now I can take back that edge that kind of got painted over by the table. A little hint of darker alizarin. And more yellow. So this is quite a bit more yellow. I'm gonna come in here. Actually, I'm gonna go even more yellow than that. Lay that there. And then break it up with my finger. Got a little hint of it on the top of the book here. And some green, apparently. <laughs> I put into there, that's all right. A little more straight alizarin. Didn't know you were gonna do a bunch of finger painting today, did ya? <laughs> a tiny spot of white, just cause I have some of the texture showing there and I don't want that. So I just dotted some white on it and then I'll just smear that. It kinda helps kick back that texture a little. I think that is pretty good for the book. That'll cover that little spot of green a bit, but really I'm not worried if that green shows up because everything's kind of reflecting everything else, so it's okay. All right, that's where we are so far. Let's start putting in our almond branch. And to do so, I'm gonna use my number 10 round and I did wet this in the jar. And I'm gonna mix up my green, blue, Payne's gray. But I'm gonna lean this one a little closer on the side of Payne's gray. So it's gonna be quite dark. A little extra water so my paint flows a bit. And we'll just kind of start somewhere in the glass. Don't worry about going over the edge of your glass. I'm gonna start on the surface of the water and just kind of let my brush shake. I'm twisting it a little bit as I go just to make sure I get a nice gnarly branch. You can even draw it slowly like that with these little short brush strokes that will help it be a little bit more organic looking too. Let's take a little bit here that kind of comes off, leans on the edge of the book or on the edge of the glass. And 
And maybe down like that. It doesn't have to be a real solid, real beautiful, smooth line. Let it be kind of broken and choppy. You know, it's a, it's a wooden stick, so it's, it's probably got some, some texture to it. And I think I brought it down a little bit too far right here. Don't bring it down all the way to the edge of your water. I can fix that. I wasn't paying attention, but what that's really going to look like is like the water is all behind it. You want it to look like it's in the water so the water would actually overlap it a bit. So I probably should have started the stick right about here, not all the way in. But like I said, I'm not worried about it. I'm going to get a little bit of white, maybe pull a little more Payne's gray in there. I'm going to I'm going to slowly start going a little bit lighter. Let's throw a little highlight. Just kind of dash it on there, see? And I'm not even referencing Van Gogh's painting anymore. I have, you know, all of the important parts in here and then everything else I can just make up as I go. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Just little bits of a lighter color here and there. I'm not worrying about uh, like light source. I'm not saying, oh, my, oh, my branch is going to be highlighted right here or right here. I'm just putting it wherever. So I am going to kind of start my branch right about there. See, so where I've got it highlighted, everything else I'm going to have be under the water. All right, now we're going to start making our almond blossoms. So I'm going to use some alizarin crimson. I'm still using my number 10 round. I'm going to kind of pick up a good amount, a little bit of a blob. And I'm not gonna get real specific. I know in Van Gogh's painting, you can see individual petals. It looks like each piece is outlined. I'm really gonna be a little bit more impressionist with it and just kind of, you know, say where I want things to be. So we'll see there's like a little flower here. Just kind of put this color wherever I feel like I want it, however I feel like I want it. Not necessarily making you know, real bud or petal shapes, just indicating where that color is for now. Just using the tip of my brush, kind of squidging and making a little, just a little shape. Don't keep everything confined to the brush or to the branch. You can come up off of it because I am going to add some other little branches afterwards and make this branch as full or as lean in flowers as you want do it however you like i am keeping this crimson a little bit on the leaner side because it's not the main color the white is going to be the main color every time i add another color it's going to get bigger and more flowery. So now I'm going to get a bit of white and mix it in. And same thing, I'm going to come back in here and kind of start putting in some other little bits, kind of keeping everything a bit together. Kind of making these lighter colors, maybe the, the blops are a little bit bigger and they're really kind of at the end of that dark crimson color. Just have fun with it. You know, when you have the colors 
and in kind of these little rounded shapes. I don't think that you have to get real specific in, you know, making a, a very obvious flower shape because your brain will interpret it as being a flower. Now I'm gonna dip right into the white. I still have the other colors, but I just picked up white and I'm gonna do some larger. See how I'm kind of leaving all of the little bits before. Still just picking up white. had a little yellow in there but that's okay because I am actually gonna pick up some yellow and put it in in a minute oh that yellow is just staying there it's a good thing I plan on putting some yellow in all right I have a little bit of yellow I'm just gonna mix into that I still have some of the crimson and white so it won't be a a real bright yellow it'll be drabbed down a little bit and I'm gonna decide where I've got maybe a little center and just kind of put that color in there maybe break it up a little bit even just make like little little bits that aren't necessarily a center it's just kind of like a little blob whatever looks right to you There was something you didn't like just put a little yellow blob over it all right I'm gonna go to my number three round get some Payne's gray maybe I'll throw a little bit of green in there but it's mostly Payne's gray no white keep a little extra water on your brush and let's do some little detail branches now I'm gonna kind of take this also as an opportunity to add some dark areas through here so kind of the way I just slashed on some highlight I'm going to do the same thing with this dark color to make sure I've got some low light and I'm just going to use the tip of my brush and just kind of sketch out where these little bits are attaching. Nothing real specific. And even come out from behind the flowers here and there and just make little little bits of the branch that kind of come out and terminate somewhere. And again, just like with the flowers, do as much or as little as you like. And if you feel like you don't even need any of these little sticky bits, don't do them. I like the way they look, especially when they're coming out from behind a flower. are getting to be about done maybe let's just pull a little branch that's kind of coming down here if 
And I'm gonna darken it up right here. And then we're gonna move on to the glass. And the glass is, finishing up the glass is the last bit that we have. Okay, I'm sticking with my number three for now, just because it's easier than switching out my brush. But I'm gonna put in the little bit of the stick down in here. Now remember, you don't want it to flop, to follow from here down because the water kind of breaks the reflection up. So we'll have the stick somewhere right in here. I just picked up that same Payne's Gray, slightly green mixture, and we'll just have it kind of disappear like that. And that's really gonna be about as much of the stick as we're gonna do. That was just not bright enough for me. Okay, I lied, there is one other thing. One of the things I love about Van Gogh's paintings is that he uses these dark, heavy outlines around a lot of his subjects. And I really wanna do that in this painting. I feel like it really helps it pop and kind of come to life. So I'm sticking with my number three round. Nice wet brush and I'm gonna mix Payne's Gray with Ultramarine Blue. Maybe just a tiny speck of white so it's not black but still very, very dark. Now I don't wanna do real perfect lines. I'm not gonna get in here and make these super perfect, super crisp lines. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of, very light pressure, but see I'm gonna kind of sketch the lines, these short brush strokes. Just like that. And you can totally change the shape of something with this if I bring that up just a little and maybe up here a little. Then we get kind of the sense that there's a little bit of a binding there. I can round off that corner, pull that in a bit. See now our book has a little bit of a bend to it. It's not this perfectly hard square book edge. And even in his painting, in Van Gogh's painting, it doesn't have it on everything. Like, it doesn't really have much of it here, but I'm going to do it because I really like this technique. Right back here. Even when you think you can't really see it, I'm not going to go and outline all of the flowers with it, but you certainly could. There's a lot of paintings where he does. But I am going to make sure to go all the way around the book. Maybe I'm going to round off that corner just a little. I take it all the way around the edge of my glass all the way around I'm not going to overlap my branch right there because my branch is on top of the glass but I am going to overlap it right there see now the branch is inside of the glass I'm gonna go quite heavy here around the glass because I'm gonna do a white outline as well for a highlight and I wanna still be able to see the dark kind of peeking out from around the edges. So don't be afraid to go with a nice heavy outline here. My glass is a little weird shaped right here. It's pretty weird shaped right there. I'm going to say that I don't really care, mostly because, you know, I don't know. It might not show once I'm done. And if it does, I can either choose to fix it or deal with it. And I would probably just end up dealing with it. Just 
that nice dark color again. Swoop it down that edge. All the way down the edge of the glass. All around this bottom edge, see now you can see the that little scallop shape a bit better. I'm even going to take this along the edge of the water here. And along the back. Not overlapping my branch right there. Just redid a little bit of that color and I'll just kind of scratch in a bit of that color to fix up the shape of my glass right there. Super easy. Going back to my half inch flat and I'm just going to get a little bit of white. My brush is damp. Just a little bit of white and let's start adding some reflections. We'll start right here. Just kind of come along the edge. Again, I'm using that kind of sketchy, using the tip of the brush. I think my brush is a little wet. Just using the tip of the brush to kind of scratch in some of that color. See, so just streak it down. Use the corner of the brush to kind of smush in some extra highlight right over that bit of branch there. That'll push it down into the glass. In case you're not able to see what I'm doing with that brush stroke, let me show you. I am not putting full pressure and making it flat. I'm using the tip of the brush. Can you see how that is? And I'm just kind of going like that. So what that's gonna do is see it gives me a hard crisp edge on the outside where the tip is, but on the inside, it's a little bit softer. It's got a little bit more of a rough edge. And that's what I'm doing here. I can even take that up above the water because this is the glass that's reflecting down over the bottom. Let's get a little bit of a reflection back there on the bottom. And I know my reflections and everything looks totally different, but that's because this is what I'm comfortable with. I'm not comfortable doing, you know, like he has with the, <laughs> those perfectly orderly lines. I am not orderly. That scraping sound you hear is my hand. See, my brush is up off of the canvas. So my hand is placed just so so I can only put so much pressure on my brush. In fact, right here where I made a mistake and brought my branch all the way down to the water's edge, I'm just gonna take a bit of this white and kind of there. Now the surface of the water has a bit of a reflection on it. Just using the corner there to scratch some in. 
Let's get a bit going on up here and we'll go back to our number three here in just a second to highlight the edges, all of the edges of the glass. All right, number three, load it up with a good amount of white. Nice bright highlight all along the edge there. Can kind of taper out as we get over to this side. Very light pressure there. See, I'm leaving some of that dark. You can still see that dark color that I put here, I'm gonna adjust the shape of the glass a little bit. Zoom me in there a little bit so you can see because it's shaped a little bit strange. So rather than following that strange shape, I'm gonna pull my white down a little and it adjusts it a little bit. Now it's a little bit less noticeable. I'm not gonna do the white highlight on everything, just the glass. So not on the book. And also along the edge of the water. Break it up a little here and there. And I'm done and I'm gonna sign up. And there's my version of Van Gogh's Almond Blossom in a Glass. And as you can tell, my painting is quite different from Van Gogh's in both color and shape, proportion, size, technique, everything. And yours should be quite different too. I hope you enjoyed painting this with me and I hope that you can see your personality shine through in the painting that you did as well. I would love to see how yours turned out. So make sure that you find me on Instagram. Just search for Painting with Jane and you'll find me. A huge shout out goes to my sponsor, Frederick's Canvas, who provided the awesome canvas that I used in today's painting, as well as provided the prizes for our Halloween marathon. For a full list of winners for our Halloween marathon, make sure that you follow me on Instagram as well. And thank you all for painting with me each week. I'll see you next time.